Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. God bless you. Hope you're doing super. This is a devotional word for June 13th, 2024. This is Acts chapter 2. Here we see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on those early disciples. We see them speaking in tongues. We see some confusion over it. And then Peter brings it all together with an amazing explanation and an amazing sermon. Uh, for this short episode, we're just going to consider... Uh, the idea of tongues and get some uh, direction from the passage about what we should we think about tongues. So let me read to you. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So these are the disciples, the 12. And as it turns out, there's 120 of them all together. Other disciples gathered together. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Interesting that the word for uh, spirit is pneuma, and it also means breath or wind. And so uh, there's, a, there's a connection there. And so it sounded like the wind, and it was the Spirit of God that came into the house and settled upon them. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Now, this is the only time that this happens. We see other people being filled with the Holy Spirit, but we never see this again. And so this initial visit by the Holy Spirit in this regard and in this way uh, was manifested one time only uh, for the disciples and to the disciples. It's not something that we should expect, I don't believe, to be the normative. If it happens again, there's certainly precedent for it. But in the in the New Testament, it only happened once. And so... We don't have to be looking for that to be able to validate whether somebody has been filled with the Holy Spirit or not. Verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the manifestation for this group of the filling of the Holy Spirit was that they spoke in other languages that they did not know. And it was led by the Holy Spirit. It says, as the Spirit gave them utterance, so it was directed by the Spirit of God. We remember from the Gospel of John, Jesus said the Holy Spirit would glorify Christ. And so uh, we're going to see that very thing happening in the passage. Let's, go, let's continue. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men uh, from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together. They were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. So this is the, the Feast of Pentecost, and there's probably millions of extra people in Jerusalem. They come from all over Europe, God-fearing people, Jews, and also Gentiles who were God-fearers. And they hear this 120 disciples, apparently they had spilled out into the street or out into public somehow. They hear them praising God in their own native English language. And so we take note of that. It says they heard them speak in his own language. Verse 7, then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, look, are not these, not, are not all these who speak Galileans? Galileans were known for having what we would call in the United States a hillbilly accent, real strong, kind of a backwoods accent. And, but they were speaking eloquently, apparently, in other languages that would not have been native to them. Verse 8, how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya joining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speak in, in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said they are full of new wine. Now, one of the things that we want to focus in on, that I want to focus in on, is what is tongues about? I want to suggest to you, based on this scripture, that speaking in tongues is to speak of the wonderful works of God. It's, it's a language given to men and women with which they can praise God in another language that they do not understand. There's a lot of study about the, the gift of tongues and what it does. And uh, as we continue to work our way through the New Testament, I'll be touching on those uh, passages when we get there. But suffice it to say for this short video, I do not believe tongues is intercessory prayer. We're not praying for somebody by praying in tongues. Um, 
We're not doing, I believe, directly any spiritual warfare or spiritual battle by praying in tongues. I'm not saying that the spiritual realm isn't upset when a Christian praises God. But I think if we're going to praise God, the primary purpose of our tongue needs to be praising God. Not kind of working ourselves up into a tongue or praying in tongues with the idea of spiritual warfare or bothering the realms of darkness. That may indeed happen, but that's not the main purpose. The main purpose of speaking in an unknown tongue is to speak of the wonderful works of God. Um, Paul does say in 1 Corinthians, if it's done privately, the person is edified themselves. If it's done publicly, there should be a translation, an interpretation, so that others can be blessed as well. Now, I've been in, in places and in gatherings where everybody speaks in tongues and there was no interpretation and it was just madness. I was not edified. I don't think Christ was glorified because nobody understood what anybody else was saying. So when a person speaks in tongues, they're, they're speaking of the wonderful works of God. If they do it publicly, there ought to be a, an interpretation. And I don't think it's anything else. And I think Christians can mean well about praying for others. We're praying for a healing. We're praying for an anointing. We're praying for wisdom and all those things. You may have your hand on somebody, which is great. And you may be speaking in tongues, but you're praising God. And maybe you're praising God as you're waiting, perhaps, for a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge or some other thing. But the tongue is not an intercessory prayer. I just don't see that. I don't see it anywhere in the New Testament. I have been in small groups where somebody would pray for somebody and then they would go off into tongues. And I'm thinking, well, they just went from intercessory prayer over to praise and, and worship of God. And maybe they're speaking very quietly, you know, real subdued voice in a tongue. And I'm not feeling a pressing need of like, I have to understand what they're saying or else this is all no good. You know, I think there's maybe for me anyway, some wiggle room there, a little grace about not demanding an interpretation. But certainly when it's done in a, in a public assembly, there needs to be interpretation. So what's the takeaway? This is a very brief study on the gift of tongues. Speaking in a language that you don't understand, I believe either human or angelic. Paul says if we speak in the tongue of men or of angels. So I do believe there is a tongue that is non-human and, and an utterance given by the Holy Spirit. But it's always to worship God. It's always to worship Jesus. And they also said... Others mock, saying they're full of new wine. You're not out of control when you're full of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads you in holy actions, not out of control. So very brief look at the, at the gift of tongues. I hope it's helpful. Some things for you to consider. Thanks for watching.